Thank you, thank you, that was wonderful. Um, you know, and I speak as a rep here, but it's no surprise that some of my best and most thriving practices spend time with men aesthetics. You know, whether you're doing it online, you're going in person, they do everything from clinical, uh, you know, as you just heard, open houses, um, marketing, any sort of training, business advice, you know, future planning, one, three, five year sort of outlook on what you want to do. Matt and Kathy are, are second to none. So um, I send a lot of my Dallas practices, Oklahoma practices up there as well. So um, next, I have the distinct pleasure to uh, introduce a Dallas native, um, and now I would call him a good friend, renowned plastic surgeon, world laser expert, and new grandfather, Dr. Jay Burns. See you, buddy. All right, take care. I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, Kathy, you made me nervous because if, if you're at 45 and you can't read this, I said I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be actually doing my talk right out here. I think so. Uh, well, it's great to it's great to be here. Uh, I uh, is my is my talk up? I can't. Anyway, so the uh, uh, I've asked a bunch of friends to be here. They're saying, hey, you know what about Saiton? They call me all the time, and I said, so look, this event is. Uh, it's Saiton, man. It's not, it's not, we're not doing CME here. It's whatever it is. But, but the reason I do this is I used to, uh, I loved this guy one time. He said, uh, um, you know, I need your um, disclosures and uh, what are they? And, I, and it was basically, he said, I take money from everybody. And so I, I've, I've, uh, that way I don't have any bias. So I used to be that guy. But uh, in my old age, I got tired of working, people that I, that working with people that I, I couldn't trust and if I gave you advice. And so if I see you at a meeting next year, I want to make sure that uh, the lasers you buy are actually worthwhile and they're not sitting in the corner. So we're here. It's totally Saiton bias, but I can do that because I believe it's the best lasers out there. Uh, and I've been around the block and I use them every day. Uh, we've got several devices. So uh, that's my disclaimer. But. Um, the one thing they do also is Robbie will, also, will, will, I don't know who, he said he didn't do this, but he put, uh, you know, I'm sitting here to give a talk, so a scientific talk about how I do lasers, and I'm trying to be serious, and so it's a whole lot of love, and I said, you know, I'm just going to go with it. And so, uh, uh, so basically, how do I, a uh, whole lot of love for lasers. So I started doing some work on it, and so cl clearly I'm, I, I, uh, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an old rocker, so I knew exactly where, you know, Led Zeppelin was, but how do I tie this in? And so I was searching on the, the, uh, internet this week, and I saw way down inside, honey, you need it. Uh, you know all the words to the song. So I said, so maybe everyone needs a whole lot of laser. I don't know. But then I thought, I came across this, and uh, I play guitar a little bit. So this is Led Zeppelin uh, was just voted. They had the greatest guitar riff of all time. Saiton has the greatest results. So maybe they tie together because results matter. So uh, I got a little bit of surprise at the end, but I'm going to switch, switch gears and try to get serious and uh, talk a little bit about laser skin re revision. They've asked me to kick this off a little bit, talking about, um, as I said, this is a Saiton event, but you're gonna have uh, KOLs here that work with a lot of different companies and have over the years. If you wanna pull me aside and talk about why this works over this laser or this laser, you can ask me any hard question you want to. You can ask it on the panel. Um, it ought to make sense. I ought to have a reason for what I do. I don't let emotions determine my truth. Truth determines my emotion. And the truth is I use these lasers all the time. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, they've asked me to talk about the history of where we got here, uh, where we are now, and I think where we're going. So I'm gonna, it's going to take me a while. So if you have a seizure disorder, uh, try not to look at the slides because they're going to be going pretty quick. So um, and is there any way that you can make this bigger? This is ridiculous, really. we got to make this bigger. Uh, for the speakers, uh, so I'll throw myself on the grenade. We've got to we got to fix this where it's a full it's a full screen. So um, anyway, so uh, in the early ni '90s, where we've been is uh, there was uh, you know my life changed uh, when you know I was a I was a first fellow um, vascular fellow uh, uh, with John Mulliken who who uh, at Boston where I trained. So John was a great man, but he didn't really realize lasers, and so would, would apply to these kids. So I had a big pediatric practice. It's been one of the, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that tomorrow. But uh, so I just was a laser, I was a guy that, that opened up the, the, uh, the box and, you know, you know knew what a, you know, all the internal components, how it worked on a laser. So in 95, there you go. Fantastic, fantastic. 
So uh, it may not mean a lot to you guys out there, but it means a lot to me. So, uh, so anyway, uh, what happened in my life changed because I actually knew about lasers, and I was just treating kids port wine stains. And, uh, but I knew how lasers worked, and in 95, uh, Hobart at Coherent Ultrapulse, the same guy that's, that started, uh, that started uh, um, Cyton, developed the Coherent Ultrapulse, and I became an aesthetic surgeon overnight, and my life changed. And so I uh, became a friend of Rox Anderson, and then that really changed it, because <laughs> I got to be on all the advisory boards over the last few years, a uh, few years, like 35. So, um, so it was a true advance, it was a breakthrough, uh, but the issue was is that, uh, you know, I remember Joan Crock interviewing me, and I thought, oh, my God, just this old Garland boy. I'm in Allure magazine and freaking Cosmopolitan, you know. And so all of these people that were lifting me up in 95 were freaking cutting my legs out from under me in 2000 when the scars started developing and hypopigmentation. And so it's just kind of what have you done for me lately, right? So these things happened, you know. You, you got scarring. And this patient at that point now, honestly, I used to give this talk and say, you don't need me anymore at this point because you just need a burn surgeon when this happens. This isn't my patient, but it, you know, it, 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 this is CO2 was, CO2 was great. It's still great if you have one, but it's not like an erbium. It's not, it's, it's, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you why. But now we, we actually can treat scars and that's gonna be a large part of what I hope we talk about this weekend. We have a, in my new practice that we've started about, we're about six months open. I'm solo and just having the time of my life. We have a whole, uh, 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 issue on scars, but this uh, whole uh, focus on scars. But anyway, uh, I've lost this lady's pre-op, but she literally, uh, she looked like a Sharpe dog when we started. So I'm just telling you, it's amazing result, but the hypopigmentation was pretty amazing. So if I could just tell you, um, rather than just saying, I'm not that, I tell my patients this all the time, it's the line I use, I say, Ma'am, I'm not going to just, I'm not that plastic surgeon that's just going to say, hey, baby, jump on my Harley and trust me and I'll drive you to the moon, you know, we're going to have a blast. I'm not that guy. And so I'm not telling you that either. So I think it's helpful if we just took a few minutes to understand why erbium, it really is the choice and why it's better than CO2. And if, if, you, if I could explain it, I can explain it in this one slide, I think, very well. And... Um, it was, uh, if you look at that bold area where it says Burkhardt and Fitzpatrick, Dick Fitzpatrick, great friend of mine, unfortunately passed away all too early to me, and, but we, we've traveled the world doing, uh, uh, doing lasers. But Boyd Burkhart was a famous plastic surgeon in Phoenix, and they came out with two studies three months apart, one in the plastic surgery literature, one in the derm literature, not knowing what each other was doing, and they both showed exactly the same thing. And what they showed was is that if you did a CO2 laser and you wiped it off, and you, I don't know if you've ever used it, but you use a, uh, uh, I know many of you probably have, but anyway, you scan, you, you wipe off, you, you rehydrate, and you keep doing that. And what they found was, is after four passes, if you kept doing that, they, the CO2 leaves residual therm, uh, char, and that char becomes so thick that if you just keep wiping off, you can't go any deeper. Because the ablation threshold at five joules per centimeter was a breakthrough. But it was only ablation for the epidermis. Once you get in the dermis, you can't keep ablating the tissue. CO2 does not love water enough. So what you have to do is you have to sit there and you have to just keep hitting it over and over again and you literally melt the tissue. You create a heat sink and that causes hypopigmentation. You just can't do it any other way. So the, the, uh, and the quote was, I mean, at the end of the year, I've got some uh, past resident, I don't know if Shoemaker remembers this, but at the end they would all roast the faculty. So my faculty roast in 2000 was this slide, and it says, 1995, Jay Burns said, CO2 never causes hypopigmentation. That's right when the year it came out. 96, it may cause hypopigmentation. 97, it rarely causes hypopigmentation. In eight, it often causes hypopigmentation. In nine, it always causes hypopigmentation. So, so uh, I have the right to change my mind. So. Uh, uh, so the, the morbidity led to, in 2000, I just remember it just all peaked and, you know, then there was, you know, so it, it, a lot of people just said, to heck with it, I'm not using lasers. Other people switched to non-ablative lasers, and if those of you were around in 2000, we had one called the Cool Touch, which we all nicknamed the Cruel Touch. I mean, that thing, that thing was a freaking beast. It, it hurt so bad. And uh, the tightening lasers, and then a lot of people switched to fractional, that came out, and that's, that's a great technology. But... Uh, Hobart, uh, 
started the, and, and Dan Nega started this Erbium project and the founding of Saiton. And so that's where we are. It was uh, introduced at Baker Gordon back in 98. It was very misunderstood because Erbium had 11 times more water absorption than CO2. You can take an Erbium and keep doing passes, unlike that thing I just told you with the CO2, that study, you can keep going. You can keep going. I was, somebody was early on in this process, I was one of my favorite stories. I've got it somewhere. I just, uh, one of these days I'll show it. It's a very Texan thing to do, but um, the guy was telling me that it's, it's, uh, Erbium was superficial, and we were a, a course with cadavers in uh, New Orleans, and so I said, well, what's this? So I went over there, and just like a typical Texan, I took the scalp off, went to the, went to the, went to the uh, skull, and, and we timed it. It was like 17 seconds I went through both Diplo and into the brain, and uh, I said, you can do superficial, or you can go deep with this thing. So uh, I have unit number 60. It still works. It's from 99 or 2000. And so uh, it's one of the reasons I'm here. If you pop, I'm a laser geek. So if you ever go to Palo Alto, go to the, go to the, to the uh, uh, headquarters and see how they make them. And when you pop them, you probably won't know if you don't pop them all the time. But you know, it's, it's gold parts. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, the parts are just different than, than the, everybody else. And that's why I still have one some 60. So um, I think it's, uh, it was misunderstood. It was a, a little technically more demanding than the CO2 just because uh, in some ways, but it had a really great effective direct endpoints. I didn't like having endpoints with a CO2 that was a chamois color or a yellow color. And to me, that's a little, uh, it's just harder to realize uh, and, and to see. It was harder for me to teach the residents. Uh, so the erbium is a direct endpoint. You can see when the wrinkle goes away, or you can see when it gets to mid-reticular bleeding. And I do do a preceptorship. I do work with men. I'm talking for an hour, but we've got, I don't know, six to 10 hours worth of videos, treatments, uh, flew up to Kansas City, that's on the Mint deal, and I also do a preceptorship um, all the time in Dallas, so you're welcome to come see this. So we'll do uh, procedures, we'll do didactic, and come back and you can see all these procedures being done. So the reason I bought an erbium, this lady walked into my, my office, I had never seen a patient with an erbium, I've been hearing about it. This was her pre-op picture that she gave me a picture before she had the laser, and she walked into the office, and they had done a, gone in and actually exposed the orbicularis muscle with the erbium. And so I called them. I said, okay, I, I'm ready to buy one now. Because I know it's superficial. And if you can go that deep, I'll figure out the, I'll figure out the middle part. And so uh, the rest is history. And so we started using erbium. And then I started comparing it to the CO2s. And I did CO2 around the eyes here and then erbium around the mouth. And you can see the difference in the redness and the recovery. And I have hundreds of these pictures. And I changed them to where I do uh, the CO2 in the mouth and the erbium around the eyes. And it was always a, a little quicker healing, a little less redness. I'm just giving you a history of where we've been from, uh, been, uh, we have come from. And so this is uh, just uh, uh, erbium results. And these are the advantages in a, in a, in a slide to summarize it, that um, you know, it's 11 to 13 times more affinity for water, really flexible, uh, uh, and a lot less morbidity and hypopigmentation than CO2. I've never had a patient in the time I've been using uh, Erbium, which is the last 20 years, uh, of like that Sharpe dog lady I was showing you. I, I just, I mean, I get hypopigmentation. You can get hypopigmentation. If you go deep enough, you'll get hypopigmentation. But the point is to see that glassy look, I just have not seen that with the Erbium. So, um, so now we'll talk a little bit about how we do these techniques. Uh, and uh, so, um, Jason's in the room, and honestly, uh, I, I told him at the Columbus event, I, I, I said, look, I just thought Jason was, I, I didn't know how he was doing this. I thought it was smoke and mirrors with the micro peels, treating these people with 40 to 50 microns and seeing a result. Now, when the halo came out, I began to understand the, the impact that superficial injury has uh, in stimulating uh, cytokines to go into the dermis and actually change the dermis. That's how HALO works. So, uh, but Posner rules on the micro peels. He did all of those. Uh, I didn't believe in it early enough because I was stupid. It's not, it's a long list of, of, of things that, like that for me. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, when I call superficial resurfacing, I'm talking about down to the DE junction, 125, 150 microns. And then I guess I'm kind of known for the aggressive laser resurfacing. And my technique is the Allen technique. I wrote it up, uh, 2019 PRS, January PRS, if you wanna look that up, if you wanna 
call the office. I'm sure Troy and, and Neil have the, have the thing. So mine's a little bit different than uh, some of the other people, but uh, it, it's worked for me, and I'll tell you how I use that. So the superficial issue is if I have, uh, I did one this week with a facelift, a guy that came in and, you know, uh, he wanted, uh, he needed a facelift, but he also just had really bad sun damaged skin as a cowboy. And he didn't, he just, he just cared about the brown spots, the barnacles, and, and, and the things on his face. And so, um, uh, so I just do a superficial full thickness uh, down to the, if you want to get all the barnacles and the superficial things, then you can go to 100, 150 microns and you'll have a real fast healing and it's fantastic and it's great. If you're, you know, there's other things that will take care of browns and reds and whatever, but theoretically, uh, treating that fractionally, uh, if you get somebody that doesn't worry about their downtime, why wouldn't you just treat their whole face because it's a full, full field effect. So um, we do that a lot. So for se severe actinic damage, it's a really great option, light erbium, uh, endpoints easier than Ephidex. You know, you, uh, for all the dermatologists in the room, my daughter's a dermatologist, I, as, as Troy said, gave me a beautiful, uh, grandchild last week, Dorothy Jane, and um, so I love her to death. Uh, but the Effidex is is uh, like cruel and unusual punishment, right? It, it's it's cheap, so no problem. It's great. It works super. I, I'm, but I'm saying I have some some people uh, who I play golf with and and who play tennis uh, who come in and just say, Hey, I just want this. I want to. I don't want to go through all that. Just you do it in 45 minutes. I'll get you down to the to DE junction, and then you heal, and then and then away we go. So I do this a lot. This is a guy that this is what their skin looks like. I treated him with some skincare for a while, but I treated him, and in four or five days he was reepithelialized, uh, no residual erythema in two weeks, and we got him cleaned up. And you can go to the DE junction. You can do that uh, uh, on a guy that you know. I just I love his haircut. There's something handsome about this guy to me, but. Um, <laughs> But you can go over the you can go over the the, the bald head. You can go over the uh, uh, the face. And uh, Patrick's going to treat my uh, uh, I'm going to be the guinea pig tomorrow. It's not a guinea pig. I'm very privileged to have Patrick treat my treat my face. And so I've had already had a couple of uh, BBL heroes um, uh, and had a fantastic result. But you can do that as well. But this this is just if you want to do a get there in a hurry and get all the brown spots, you can do this to 100, 125, 150 microns one pass. Um, and if you have AKs, you can spot treat that. So I'm a big fan of, of this island technique. Um, and the way I do it is um, I use, this is for severe wrinkles, it's 300 microns. This is all in the, pa this is all in the paper that you can get. I'm sure they have reprints. But uh, severe wrinkles, I uh, use pure ablation. I don't use coag because my endpoint is uh, uh, the bleeding pattern. I have two, two ways I stop. If you come to the preceptorship in Dallas, you should be coming for really, the major reason is to look over my shoulder and let me show you what mid-reticular bleeding looks like so that everybody says, I want the results that you show. Um, and so I'm honored by that, but I, I want you to do it safely and you've got to know when to stop. And sometimes if the wrinkle's gone, then you've won the, you know, you've won the lottery, it's gone and you can see it. But if it hasn't gone, when do I stop? Because if I go further and get all this wrinkle, that wrinkle goes beyond the mid-reticular dermis and you're going to get some scarring. So the reason that I, uh, so I don't use coag because if I use coag, in this situation, it affects my bleeding. Profractional, uh, I use 22%, two passes, or really I use 11% on three passes. So if the island, if the skin is thin, I'll use 11%. You could do 22% one pass and 11%. The point is go 33% on thin skin, 44% on, on thicker skin like my eyelids, eyelids, and about 500 to 600 depth. I've even gone seven or 800. This is not in the manual. This is not what they recommend. But people say, well, how, how do you, it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work if you use what's in the manual because you're gonna be really safe. And so I'm, I'll show you some results and you can see if you wanna do that. Um, I was really honored. Paul uh, came to my uh, preceptorship a couple of times and uh, he, he knows as much about this as I do. And he. Uh, He's got a, a big repertoire, and he said he's, he, he really likes this technique. So that meant a lot to me because he's very uh, gifted at what he does. And so um, anyway, uh, so my, these are my endpoints, wrinkles eliminated. So I couldn't run the video well, but I just wanted to show you, and I, can, I don't know that I can, uh, I might step out, but if you see where I'm pointing, there's a little circle that doesn't have any bleeding. That is deeper, okay? Now, that area to me, you could have a lot less bleeding there. Think about it. You look here, you know, blood vessels, if you cut it here, you're gonna see, you know, four bleeding points. If you cut it here, you'll see one bleeding point. And the larger I get, the closer I get to the aorta, it's gonna get bigger. 
things, <laughs> right? So the point is, when you get to the mid-reticular bleeding point, you get larger vessels. With, 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 with larger vessels, you'll see a lar larger drop of blood, and it'll be separated by three to four to five millimeters. And, and I'll show you that. But this is more, if I looked at that whole area, just lateral, especially you see right up along the vermilion border, that's up in the papillary dermis. I haven't really got there yet. And so these are the ways you read the skin. And if you come to do the preceptorship, I can teach you that. Uh, if you go to the menesthetics course, it's on there as well. So these are people, I was going to show you some. This is a really cool case because this, this lady we did at the preceptorship. So I've got 15 people in the room, so I'm not hiding anything. These are, I'm very confident we, get, we can get, eradicate lip lines very aggressively, very, very thoroughly. Um, and um, uh, so this is a lady we treated. And if you look, she's nine days out, and her wrinkles are not gone. But I, we got to a bleeding point that I said, I can't go any further. And so I, it was really cool because she let us take these pictures. And so look, as she comes out, so it's nine days. So there's two mechanisms, right? The reason I can't predict that I can get all the wrinkles gone is I had to stop on her. And it was improved, but what I, can't under, what I couldn't predict is that there's two mechanisms of action. One is I can take away, I can take away all the sins of the past on day one, right? But there's another mechanism of action. I can mow the grass down and get, get those wrinkles down, but there's new collagen being developed. Well, everybody's immune system is different, so I can't tell if you're going to put a lot of collagen or a little. Fortunately, this lady put a lot of collagen down, and so this is, I, I get to show these people and I get to show you what I've been trying to say all along is if you stop at mid-reticular dermis and the wrinkle's not gone, don't despair. Let's, you, you're going to continue to get improved results. And look, you can start seeing the collagen being laid down at a month. And now she's out six months. And despite, uh, if you look at her results, uh, she's put enough down there to where we've really eradicated, I think, almost all of her upper lip wrinkles. So it's a really great uh, uh, way to show uh, the new collagen that's being deposited in the mechanisms of action. So this is our study. Uh, we did 46 patients. I'm going to run through this fairly quick because uh, I want to tell you where we're going. That's really exciting to me. And uh, we, we uh, proved it was the best results ever reported uh, for erbium or CO2. And it, we did the CO2 study back in the late 90s. Uh, and that was kind of uh, one of the, I think, one of the gold standards for the CO2 results. And we did exactly the same paper. We just repeated it with the erbium. This is, uh, the average result was 62%. I was really disappointed with that number because I, I think I get better than that. This is a 62% result. I don't know. She was pretty happy with that 62% result. And that was an average result in our studies. Um, the worst result was a 47% result. And she was pretty happy with that, just laser alone. Uh, I'm not really happy with that because I think I could go back and, and do it better. Uh, but uh, the best results are up near 100% um, and uh, just laser alone. So what we found was this, this is, a, this is an, uh, a complications table from my CO2 paper back in the 90s. And it showed, if you look over there, um, um, the scleral show is 6%. Um, um, uh, hypopigmentation was 8%. Well, I had to go back because this, this was... This was reported, uh, some of these patients were six months out. And as you know, hypopigmentation will take almost a year to develop, and sometimes two years. So a couple years out, I had to go back and write a retraction that our rate was up over 30% for hypopigmentation uh, if, we, if we followed them out. But if you look at our study, uh, we had 2% hypopigmentation. It was much milder. Uh, erythema was only 4%. So we just had a lot lower complication rate. And we actually had better overall results in the CO2. So the way I usually present this, the way we did the studies, is we did, we did consecutive patients. We didn't want to cherry pick anything. We didn't want to, we just said, OK, we're going to take, we're going to start somewhere, and we're going to take consecutive patients, and we're going to report them all. So I've done this. I've presented it twice at ASAPs in the paper that I did. And um, uh, these are just consecutive patients of, uh, of, uh, uh, of laser resurfacing. These people are all, if someone shows you a picture less than six months, go get a cup of coffee, right? Because if I hit you with a baseball bat right now in this meeting, tomorrow morning when you show up, you're not going to have any wrinkles, right? I mean, uh, and so, so there's going to be, there's going to be, there is going to be swelling, and you can't believe that the swelling still lasts at six weeks and at three months. I can't tell you, these wrinkle, all the wrinkles will show up about six months. And whatever you have at six months, you're good. And so, uh, so all these people, as you'll see, are out a year. So these are real results. They're long lasting. Um, you know, uh, here we go. 
consecutive patients. And so I wanted to stop on this lady because everybody said, well, you know, you've dropped the ball there. This might be my best result because I think this lady was smoking on the way to the OR and she, I think she, she lit up in the parking lot on the way home. So uh, uh, this is, these are tough cases, man, these, these, these cases that are deep, deep wrinkles in smokers. So I will do a smoker, right? I just say, look, I, I've got to record, I just showed you new collagen being laid down over six months, right? So if you're smoking and you're making the blood vessels smaller and you're putting carbon monoxide, which is gonna hold on to all my oxygen, then you're choking your immune system from putting new collagen here. So I'll do you, it's not unsafe, it's just you're not gonna get as good a result. And so uh, there's that. And I did, I did wanna say one thing about the island technique, if I could. I wish I could, I wish these screens were up where I could show you, uh, use my pointer. But anyway, um, if you, what I normally do is I'll go over the sides, I'll, I'll, I'll go over the whole thing to about 240, 250 microns, maybe two passes at 125. Now I'm down in the deep papillary or maybe upper reticular, and then I take my 30 micron uh, depth manual spot size of four millimeter, I don't even change hand pieces, and then I just go over the ridges, okay? The reason is if, you know, uh, for drama, I usually, during, during a talk, I say, okay, would you just listen to me on this point? If you're drifting off, just listen to what I'm telling you. Because this is important. This is, this is why I use the island technique. Because I'm a general surgeon and I worked in the burn unit a lot. So we had people that came in and they may have burned the back of their hand or something. And you couldn't tell if it was a superficial second or a deep second. And what's the difference? The surgeons in the room will tell you, if it's a deep second, you gotta graft it. It's important to know the difference. So how do we know? When we couldn't tell, we just had to wait for two weeks. Because if it epithelialized within two weeks, it was a superficial second and you didn't need to graft it. But if it didn't heal in two weeks, then it was a, a deep second and you had to go graft it. So I always get worried if I can't heal a wound in two weeks, right? So why do I treat, I've heard some people uh, treat the whole lip with four passes at 200 microns. And you can get away with that sometimes. And they'll say, hey, Burns, look at this result I got. I'm going to 800 microns just like you do, and look at this result, it's working great. And I go, I've never done that in my life. Because if I just use the, the wrinkles and treat those, then this upper part of her lip, why do I need to go to 800 microns there? But I can use the epithelium that I don't go as deep at, so it can come and migrate, because epithelium will, will migrate at about a millimeter a day. So the point is, if you can actually migrate epithelium, if you treat the whole lip to 800, you've got, you're taking out hair follicles, you're taking out other things, and you don't have any source of epithelium, you've got to come all the way, and it can't get there in two weeks if you go too deep. But if you leave little islands in there where you're not as deep, the epithelium comes from the sebaceous glands and the hair follicles and it comes out and it heals the area where you are 800 microns deep. So that's why I call it the island technique and it's worth looking at. So um, this is a year out. Um, just, I think you can see we get some nice results there. And I think erbium is the most effective treatment of superficial pigment. You can go four microns. Jason's shown you can do peels at four, 10 or 15 or 20 uh, and it works. Or you can go all the way down through uh, uh, both Diplo and the skull into the brain. I don't know when you're gonna actually have that opportunity, but if you do, you know you can do it. So, uh, but it may thin your skin, it, it, it may thin the skin, may cause increased pore size. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but here's another way I wanna stop for a second, okay? Well, let me just wait. That's a little bit, that was, okay, fractional. So where we've been is fractional CO2, and, we, and we've got, uh, I, I was there and I, I did a ton of stuff. I had the first uh, fractional CO2 uh, in the country. I wrote the first white paper on it. I was a big fan of it. It, 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 it helped my practice. And, uh, and we, you know, th this was that change back in 2000. We were trying to get away from the morbidity. And uh, so this is the, one of the first patients I treated. I did a 40% coverage at 1,250 microns. I mean, that's deep, right? And, uh, and it's a pretty good result. She healed quickly and I thought, oh my God, we're onto something. And um, I don't know what it is about, you know, cause I, my whole career has been getting these toys, trying to figure it out. You know, my, my, I mean, when I first get these things, I'm, my sphincter pressure is opening up garage doors on the way to work. I'm so nervous about what the hell is going on. So I have to figure it all out. And, and, and the point is, is that the, uh, it worked great, but that's, I don't know what it is. When you first start out, you get this great result and then you over, 
you know, it, that's the best result I ever got. Because the next lady came in, I actually went 45% coverage at the same depth, and I couldn't tell the difference between the, the pre and the post. So fractional will not treat effectively lip lines like that. It just won't. Uh, and I get people all the time that come in here have been treated two or three times with some kind of a fractional device on their lips, and they're frustrated, and uh, I try to tell them that what I'm doing is different than that. And so uh, where we are is profractional erbium, because uh, you, you, you don't have to use, uh, you don't have coag like the CO2 did, and it will not increase so pore size. So let me just, this is where I wanted, you to, I wanted to stop and I want you to listen. If a lady comes in and she mentions the word pores, don't do classic fulfilled erbium that I just showed you, the, the island technique, okay? Because you're going to make the pores bigger, because my dermatology colleagues have taught me that pores are pyramidal. So if you have, think about a traffic cone. If you mow down a traffic cone, the pore is going to get, it's going to get bigger. You're going to see the pores. So you want to fractionate if they say pores. Uh, a lot of times on the noses, I'll use profractional. And the other thing is, what if you do classic full field around the lower eyelids and they don't put enough collagen back that you've taken off? Now you've made their skin more thin. And I had people coming in going, hey, I look great, you're a magician, but my eyelids look worse. And I thought, well, you know, typically my gut reaction is another crazy patient. But I actually take pictures because I lecture, and they were right. And I think it's patients who don't put enough collagen back in. So I have switched over, and around the eyelids where it's really thin skin, I'll use profractional pro aggressively like I just told you with those parameters. So if I have acne scarring, same thing. You know, acne scarring, you can get better by using the, the classic resurfacing, but that's a treatment for uh, fractionated treatments, in my opinion. So fractionated treatments are my first choice for, uh, for acne, in, pore size, and thin skin around the eyes. Okay. So I tell people the way I tell them is I can either mow the grass or I can aerate the lawn. And they tend to understand that. I tell them what I'm doing about which one, and I tell them why I'm using it where. I rarely, in fact, I never, hardly ever, use um, uh, one laser in a full face resurfacing. Uh, I will be, I do very detailed treatments because if people come in, they're coming to me, they're saying, oh my God, you know, you're supposed to be, the, you know, I want smooth skin. Well, that means I got to take care of their sebaceous hyperplasias, their seborrheic keratosis, their pore size, their thin skin around their eyelids. So a lot of times I'm using re, uh, uh, classic resurfacing around the lip lines. I'm using fractional around the, the, the eyes, and I'm going to tell you where we're going in the future uh, and how I do that. So this is just making sure if you have large pores, don't, don't treat that. So my profractional settings are 400 to 800 microns, and I, uh, Saiton let me use uh, an OCT, oculoconfocal tomography, for about a year. And uh, in that, we realized that the eyelid is somewhere between, it varies, huge variation in eyelid thickness. 400 to 900 was our range. 400 to 900 microns until we hit the orbicularis. And the orbicularis is much thicker than that. So I felt like that I was getting good results with my lower eyelids, and I was trying to figure out why. And I've always thought I was getting to the orbicularis. I had to be in order to get the results we're getting. So we just proved in this study, we did 400 to 800 microns. Um, kind of chose based on what the eyelid skin thickness looked like. And uh, the one thing, again, I'm going to stop you again. The parameters that I'm showing you at three passes at 11% or two passes at 22%, no matter what you're doing, put your finger on their medial eyelid and treat that at half the density. Because if you're going to get a complication, that's the thinnest skin. It's where all the, that's where all the scarring or the delayed healing happens. So if you'll cut the density in half on the medial one centimeter of the eyelid, you'll avoid 95% of all your issues with the lower eyelid with these settings. Um, so uh, again, I'm going kind of quickly. This is more to tell you about uh, all the things Saiton has to offer, things I use every day. Um, but, uh, uh, but this is some of the confocal uh, uh, tomography, and I couldn't read it. We had to send it off to a guy to let me know, you know what it was in retrospect. But uh, there, you can see orbicularis muscles, and if I had a pointer, I could show you, but you see it down there, uh, the little elliptical thing. You see those little dark areas. That's the orbicularis. We could measure the eyelid thickness. And so uh, this is one of our patients, and she was around 400 uh, uh, microns thick. And um, 
that's where the orbicularis was. In the middle, it was at 500. And so uh, we actually, this shows, you can't see it, but these vertically, it looks like artifact, but those are actually the tunnels we made the, uh, with the, the profractional erbium. We, we, we'd, we'd do these right in the recovery room. We would do the OCT. So we found out we were going up to 560. So we were actually getting in to the orbicularis. And so I just believe, so here's the thing as a plastic surgeon. I, I really feel, uh, Eric and I were talking, I love doing, uh, another plastic surgeon in, in, in the Bay Area, and you know he and I both agreed that you know we did okay noses, but I mean life's too short. I'd rather freaking sell used cars than do noses because uh, I mean it's uh, yeah I've got a clap from there. I mean the point is you can do a great nose and the, and the the mom can wear you out or the patient can wear you out. It's just not worth it. You just do something else. Uh, if you, for those people that do noses, God bless you. Give me your card. I'm going to send you all all my patients. Uh, the other th the other thing that is I was taught, you know, I was taught in the, in the Marines, man. We were at, at UT Southwestern. We did everything aggressive, scleral, re, septal resets. And when septal resets work great, they are amazing. They'll make the cheek go right into the eyelid and you look 15. And when they don't, they walk around town going, Dr. Burns is my doctor. And, 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 uh, and I just got tired of it. So 85% of my patients on the lower eyelid, I'll say, what if I could get rid of your bags and improve your wrinkles 70 to 80 percent with no risk of scleral show and and you look natural 85 percent of my patients say yes and the other 15 percent i get dr grant gillen he comes in the or he does my lower lids i don't open a lower lid anymore because i just i just want to have a glass of wine with my wife rather than listen to my patient bitch all afternoon so <laughs> so this is why I, I do this is why i do lower lid transconch fat and and, and resurfacing. And these patients are out over six months. I don't know that I can tell much different than an open lower lid the way I do them. On a patient like this, it's even better because she's got that crepey skin. Uh, you can't get rid of festoons uh, um, uh, with, with this, so I don't tell them that. But I just think these results are about equivalent to my regular bluff, but I'm using the parameters I showed you, and these are long-term long results. Um, and so I, I just think it works, but you've got to use the parameters that we're talking about. You know, so not every wrinkle's gone, but when every wrinkle's gone, you're right there at the cliff, man. It, it, right when you get past every wrinkle gone, you get Dr. Burns is my doctor again. So, uh, all right, so, uh, but you can get some, I mean, this patient's not every wrinkle's gone, it's not a perfect result, but she's natural, she's super happy, she didn't have any scleral show, and she's, and she's good to go. So that's where, that's where we uh, were, this is where we are, uh, and I think we have the best skin rejuvenation in the world. I think the contour, profract, halo combinations are just uh, BBL Hero, Moxie. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, uh, you know, we just opened a practice. Um, I got, uh, we had the MJUL, and I had to get a new uh, x uh and it's just, we use it every day. And uh, uh, my, my team, we got so busy with the m we just had to get another one, uh, x -Jewel. So if, when you get results kind of like this, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, that's not hard to sell until you show them the recovery. But this is a, uh, and I'll show you about that too, but th this is a, even a scleroderma patient. I presented that at Controversies a couple of years ago. And uh, it's just a very safe laser. You don't want to put a lot of heat in these patients with scleroderma or whatever, but you can. I mean, this lady was, you know, you can tell she's got nice looking skin otherwise, and, and we were able to help her with that. So it's really, really fun. And so if you come to my preceptorship, I promise to send you the, the post-op results of the patient you saw us treating. And this is our last four preceptors. Uh, so uh, uh, this lady right here, uh, um, yep, what's the catch, Morna? Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, w uh, what's the catch? The catch is uh, the general anesthesia that it takes, although we do all of our preceptorship cases under local anesthesia with blocks and Pronox, and we do it just fine. You can do it. You can do a full face, and you don't need general anesthesia. If you combine it with surgery, I, I usually do that. And so uh, the risk and then the downtime. So uh, this is kind of where we're going and, and what I'm learning. Uh, it take, I should have learned this a long time ago. But I really began to look at this patient. And so she's, uh, you know, what's wrong here? I mean, she looks OK. She's got, her, uh, she's got, got better skin. She's got a better contour. What's the catch? This is the catch. So I start seeing a patient like this, and I can't really, to be honest with you, I was been talking to some of the revision people who are working with skin biomes, and I, they're teaching me that 
The biome on the lateral face is different than the mouth, it's different than the nose, it's different than the forehead. And the point is, it may be something about the biome. And so when I told them, so how do I, so this lady's out there at day nine, okay? You remember talking about sphincter pressure getting up there? This is where, this is where it starts happening to me, right there. So I know that I need to get this wound healed in four or five days, the two-week time, right? So how do I do that? Zeno Baji taught me, because he got these all the time with his aggressive peels. So he used a fluorinated steroid. Uh, and so I have, my girls, we have one. We don't use it a lot, but we use it. And when we use it, and they, the, the revision people said it might work just because we may be helping the inflammation. So you really would never put a steroid in an open wound. You're not supposed to put a fluorinated steroid on the face, but I cannot tell you if you don't use it and you don't want to use it, don't do resurfacing because you're going to need it occasionally if you use the aggressive island technique I'm telling you about. And so um, why that happens out there, that was only 100 microns deep. I'm telling you, I always go lateral when I do a facelift combination. I'll do aggressive, my total technique around the mouth, and I'll, go, I'll, I'll layer it out here. I'll go superficial, and yet she breaks down there. So this lady, look at her lateral cheek. All her sun damage is really in the middle. You know, like most women, the forehead's not as bad, but yet I treated, you know, I treated her in the same kind of pattern, and here we out, she's not healing, again, in the same place, and I see it all the time. Now look, I fractionated around her eyes, so she heals really quickly from the fractional, uh, profractional erbium. But I started looking at this, and I started asking this, and, 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 and with Kelly, my nurse, who's been with me for 20 years, and I said, what, what are we doing, right? Why do we, why do, we do that? What if, you know, I can put steroids on. Look, look, in three days, I've got her all healed, and, you know, her result is great. But I'd like to, I'd like to stop. I'd like to improve the experience of the patient. What if we could do this in a kinder and gentler way? So that's what I'm calling, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a page out of Bitter's book who's, who's patented the Forever Young and all that stuff, and I said, I'm a, I want to have something. So I'm calling this laser skin to life. And so look at how we, we, we can heal them. And so she's okay at day 20. That lady's 79 years old, right? And, and uh, so she's super happy, and, and, uh, but I just wanted to make it better. So uh, that's, that's her, and she's all healed up. Uh, and she's super happy about that. So what I was going to tell you, I show everybody, I show every, every patient this sequence. And since I've been doing it for the last nine months, I've never had a patient walk in and look like that. Because I said, this lady just basically walked in, didn't do anything to her face, let it scab up, and this is what it looked like. And I said, if you do that, this is what you're going to look like. So fortunately, she was really intelligent. She just she just, I guess, missed it. She didn't. She wasn't a bad patient. And so she let us take her through. What if we help you through this deal, start working on this? And, and every day we took a picture. So this is day three after we debride it. Day four, the reason the mouth is a little bit deeper is because we went really deep there and we didn't go as the other place. Day five, and all of a sudden, you know, they start freaking on day one, two, and three. But day six, you know, we're out there and now we're good to go. And so they go, okay, maybe I can do this. Uh, but some people say, I'm out. <laughs> okay, so uh, is there another way? So you're telling me there's a chance. Yes, <laughs> there is. There is another way. And so these are the new paradigms, and it's something I'm really excited about because I, I think it, it's coming at a perfect time because I've got 30 years of experience of watching this. I, I really do. The one thing I might do is I might, I, I do have attention to detail, and I'm kind of watching these patients' recovery, and when you get to be my age, you just really want simplicity and ease and lack of complication. And the things I would put up at 35, I'm not really digging in my 60s. So is there a way to do this? I'm not gonna compromise on result, okay? I, I will not do that. But is there a way we can do this to give a patient an experience that's better so that the room can say, okay, I might try this? Because I've been talking you know, for 20 years and everybody said, I'm just gonna send them to you, this is ridiculous. And uh, so, skin to life. So what, what I wanna do is I wanna take resurfacing, right, that you just saw, and I showed you the butt whipping that it is, the, the, the post-op recovery, and most of them now are a lot better than that sequence I showed you, uh, because I show them that picture and they, they listen to me and they take care of their skin, and you can make it a lot easier. But I still want it to have less risk, less downtime, better, pa better patient experience. So what I'm doing is, 
laterally, if they don't need aggressive treatment, I'm switching to a profractional or a halo out there to blend it. That's all they need. And if they can see there's something psychological, I'm telling you, when the patient starts seeing healing here and it's lagging here, they don't bitch as much because they see progress and they're waiting that extra couple of three days without a lot of complaints. Also, what about our halo patients that, you know, I, I told Doug Caro, I, I, I turned it all the way up to 600, 100 microns, everything halo would give me and I started trying to see if I could do the lips and I told Doug, I said, I'm not getting the results I'd like to see and he goes, that's why we made the contour herbium because halo's not meant to do that. So how do we take those patients that really need a halo and they love the downtime, uh, you know, it's more than the BBL Hero, but it's certainly not what resurfacing is, but how could we add something? So now we'll do a halo and we'll up, up it to do just a perioral erbium or maybe a periocular profractional. So, you've, so I call that halo skin to life and then the re resurfacing skin to life is kind of a, 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 a kinder, gentler resurfacing. So let me show you some of the things we've been really playing with and I've really enjoyed it. This lady had kind of a lower face and neck, and I'll, I'll combine those treatments and do uh, 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 laser on them at the same time. And as I said, I, I can be aggressive in the middle and, 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 and taper it, but I, I just use halo out there now, um, and so uh, are profractional. So this lady had uh, erbium around her mouth, profraction around the eyes. I would spot treatment, like let's say I'm doing halo out here, okay? But you have two or three brown spots that look like they're resistance feel free to go in there with the manual erbium spot size and hit that little brown spot. And now you've, you're really giving them an individualized concierge service. You know, so, you, so the great thing about having the platform is you've got the contour, the profrac, the halo, you've got it all in one right there in the OR in your treatment room and you can do this. So this is her out on day 15 and, and her, uh, pre-op and her day 15, she has a healing and none of that lateral uh, delay. She's got a really nice result uh, and she looks natural and she had, a, she had no healing problem uh, 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 issue whatsoever. This is a lady that came in looking like this. Uh, uh, we did a brow lift. We did a lower face and neck. I did erbium around her mouth. I, did, I spot treated all those red spots on her forehead or those, they're either AKs I got or brown spots and I haloed uh, the rest of, of the face. So here she is. You don't see that lateral fullness. You just see some brown, you see some red spots where I did it. And so she's out here. Uh, I don't know what day that is, but it's just a, a day. Okay, there's day seven, and then day I can't remember if that's eight. Okay, and then day nine, and then she's back in her makeup a little bit more than I like. But but clearly, <laughs> at, at but clearly at ten days, she's a super nice woman. And I'm just thinking we're getting a kinder, gentler healing and rec and recovery. And she's really happy, and she's got all of her goals. Uh, and that's just a lot easier uh, uh, on me. And then the Halo STL is it, we're expanding the indications, just like I, sh I told you, patient indi uh, indication is the key. So we do Halo over her face. Again, Halo Skin to Life, again, a huge component, men aesthetics. We talk about this at detail for hours about how to do Halo Skin to Life on men aesthetics if you want to join that and, 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 and learn about it. So now we can just do a little bit more erbium on her mouth and because if we just did a halo, she'd say, okay, it's great, but what about these lip wrinkles? Well, let's just go get them. You know, so that's what we're doing now, and the recovery is great. This is some people we did up in Kansas City with Kathy that are on the mint uh, issue. She had a uh, halo, and she had a little Botox. Uh, that's what the bruising was from. And as you can see, we've gotten rid of her, of her uh, lip lines. Uh, and so don't take unnecessary risks. Let's just go where we need to go. And this says this year's Darwin Award goes to Elizabeth for picking the worst moment to admit to having an affair with Tom's brother. And so not, not when you're hanging on a cliff. So, um, so I also want to say where are we going, and I've got about 10 minutes left, so where are we going is going to work out here it looks like. So I wanna, we're, where we're going is several different ways, and I want to show you that, that, that we're enjoying and using the platform. These are the classic ways you use them, and then I'm going to tell you some other ways you can use them as well. So we really believe that optimizing post-op care, um, you know, I was a big Flexan fan, and uh, most of the people in the room that, that have called me, I mean, there's people here that go, hey, Burns, where do you get your Flexan? I literally knew Flexan was going out of business, and I bought the entire warehouse that they had every piece of flex in, and that, that lasted us for about, Kelly's out there, she, she bought it, so it lasted us for about three years, and then we ran out. 
And so we had to look for other options. So now we have, we've optimized our post-op care. I don't have enough time to go into it right now, but if you catch me on the side, we can do it. If you come to Dallas or go to Men Aesthetics, you'll see the whole thing. But uh, some of the things that the skincare uh, companies that are working with us, uh, I, I went on a journey back in 2019. I thought I was gonna retire. Uh, and just run non-surgical and just do all of this non-surgical aesthetics. So I had a little bit of time. I didn't end up retiring. I ended up opening my own place, and I've never been happier in my life. Uh, I wish I'd done it 10 years ago. But, uh, but anyway, I did do something I don't know that I've heard anybody do because I got frustrated with uh, even asking great estheticians and great dermatologists how they chose their products. And what I found is shouldn't shock you. It had to do with rep relationships. It had to do with family members working at the company. I'm, I'm telling you, it's the wild, wild west. So I decided to go around to all the skincare companies, and I visited most of them. And I looked at their gene upregulation labs. I went to their formulation labs. I learned so much about skincare. I'd love to give you a talk someday. I just love talking about skincare now because I realized. Hello. Yeah, I realized what it. I, I realized what it takes. I realized who outsources it, who does it in-house, uh, how, how many years does it take to come to market, how do you, you know, where you buy your products, um, uh, the botanicals and the, and the things, all of those things. So I found out that, that some of these skincare lines rose to the top and I won't, because um, uh, I, I, just, I just think if we order 15 products and we're telling them that we know, well, what do you know? What, if, you, if you offer 15 different skincare products, if they're smart, they're going to go, they don't know Jack, because they're, they're offering me 15 different products. So we've got three or four that we offer that, that rose to the top, in my opinion, and it's based on science. It's based on looking at the washout studies and how you do them. It's the only way you can do it, and so you have to do your research. So Elastin and Revision are two of the ones that we feature. They're here. Um, and so we love the Nectar, and they've shown good studies that show they can change the extracellular matrix modulation with their protein approach. And there's good uh, Alan Widrow's plastic surgeon, super bright guy, has his own lab at UC Irvine uh, where he's doing cutting edge stuff. And so we can, actually, we can actually show in these studies that if you actually get the skin in shape, uh, you'll actually heal better. So we use this product uh, for two weeks before um, we, uh, we go live with the resurfacing if we can. And it's also good to use around any product that you're using. Um, and again, these are, these are studies that I'm trying to show you really quickly. The, uh, the other, uh, we're working with Revision as well for the same kind of product, both before and after, uh, and we'll have options. Uh, but I love, uh, I love Revision's philosophy of a balanced pH, and because you know, it, they don't use alcohol in their products. Alcohol gives you a quick fix, uh, so it looks good for a while, but alcohol is a poison, and if you use it over a long period of time, it's not good for your skin. So, they use a neutral pH, I love it, and this THD ascorbate, uh, I just love this, uh, their, their vitamin C, it's lipophilic because they put the ascorbate muscle, and then when it's absorbed, uh, it's intracellularly converted to the active L-ascorbic acid. But if you put an L-ascorbic acid on there directly, it's been shown you have to have a pH of 2.5 or less, the acid punches holes in your skin, and again, long term, uh, the point of this story is that you, can, you get, um, much greater absorption with the THD of scorbate and more delivery into the tissue. It's a great, uh, a great um, antioxidant and a study that showed 33% lightening in melasma pigment just by using the THD of scorbate. So we use a lot of this skincare that helps us uh, to supplement where we're going. And, and one of the things that uh, Jill Weibel came to our Dallas meeting and uh, when I was, when I was uh, involved in it and uh, um, she stole the show. I mean, the plastic surgeon said, God, my God, where did, where did this woman come from? Well, I've known, I mean, Jill is like the god of scars, okay, the goddess of scars. And uh, so I do everything that Jill does because she has proven it's great. If you ever hear her talk, she talked at the, in Columbus and it was just fantastic. Uh, but I'm a wobble disciple and I believe that scars work. And so I called you when I first started out on this, I had a lady that did a breast reduction and I don't think plastic surgeons really know this, uh, not many, but I did a breast reduction and I was really proud, a young girl, she's pretty, she had, I, I thought the reduction looked great, but she just, was, she just had these red ropey scars, you know, same guy, I mean, you know, you do 100, 100 patients and 
90% are are, have an acceptable scar, 5% think you're a god, and 5% wonder if you really do have a medical license. And, and you're doing the same thing, and they just get these terrible scars. So I treated her about four times, and I wasn't getting anywhere like I wanted to as fast as I was. That's why I went into surgery and not dermatology, because I wanted it to happen quickly. And she said, Burns, you're a surgeon. Just stop whining and keep doing what I'm telling you to do. And I kept doing it, and her scars faded away, flattened out. Uh, I'm not saying you couldn't see them, but it was a radical improvement. And I said, okay, I'm in. So we treat scars with... You know, for reds, the BBL will help with the vascularity. You punch holes in, with, uh, and we do several scar treatments at our preceptorships. We'll punch holes with the profractional, and we'll drip either, if it's a hypotrophic scar, hypotrophic scar, we'll, we'll drip fillers in there. If it's, if it's white, hypopigmented scars, we'll drip Latisse in there and bring the pigment back. Uh, it, it's just an amazing things that you can do and add to your armamentarium. So treating scars are great. And... Um, I'm going too fast, and you want to take a picture of that, you can, but, uh, if you, or if you want to know these settings, I'll give it to you. But this is in all of Jill's uh, articles, but you can see you can do hypertrophic, atrophic, hypopigmented, or hyperpigmented. The hyperpigmented scars, Jill has an entire practice made up of type 4 patients in Miami, and she uses, and they get hyperpigmentation, and so if we have we're treating patients now that we've never treated before. Type four, type five. We treated several influencers this week with dark skin, type four and five skin, confidently because the moxie can help with melasma and you have to keep treating them, but we have really opened the door on treating uh, scars that get PIH. And what you have to do is you have to treat them with the moxie, ice them for 15 minutes right after the procedure and give them a fluorinated steroid. This is Jill's protocol, and she, she told me that she doesn't have any PIH. Now, that's in a population that should have tons of PIH, and Jill is one of the most honest people I know. I've got a two-hour interview with her uh, talking about all this on men aesthetics. It was, it's, we were doing kind of a KOL interview thing. So this is a lady. We're not through with her, but she came in. She was building. Her family was building a catapult in Fort Worth in their backyard, and it kind of went off prematurely. And uh, this is a lady, that, this is a young woman that grew up with my children about the same age. And so with two treatments, and we've got other treatments. I know Kelly's a freaking because she's, I've got better results than this because, uh, uh, but we're, we're, we can improve those scars. This is a lady that had post-surgery. We did a revision and then now we're, we're, we're helping that. This is a, somebody that's after one treatment. We are helping the hypopigmentation by dripping Latisse in there. So where are we going? The m the BBL Hero, and the Moxie. Uh, this is just a couple of treatments with the Moxie. Patient's super happy with that. The Moxie's been a total surprise to me. I knew, I've, I've been waiting for the BBL Hero, and you're going to hear all about it. I'm not going to talk about it except on the panel. BBL Hero is just, if you don't get that, you're an idiot. And so, uh, uh, I mean, you, you shouldn't be in business. I'm telling you. It's just, it's just it's, you're killing it. You're treating arms and legs. But we're going to talk about that later. I, I digress. Anyway, the Moxie, this is a lady that's a, uh, that's been, had tried everything. And she's a CEO, she's a, she's a, she's a fantastic um, uh, you know, CEO, she doesn't have much time. And she came in and got one treatment with the Moxie and just getting that one treatment that got, got her to where she uh, lightened it a little bit, it was the best result she had ever gotten. And now she comes back, she's a loyal patient, bringing her friends, uh, and, and it's really because, it, we couldn't have done that without a Moxie. Now I'm not, I think this is, I wouldn't show this to patients. I'm just showing you that how surprised I was. This is one treatment. This, this should be a, this is a resurfacing patient. She needs, she needs, uh, I mean, she needs BBL. She needs a lot, right? This lady had one Moxie treatment. When they showed me, I just couldn't believe it, right? I mean, we still could do more, and we are, but, but I just am, I'm shocked at, at how well the Moxies work. This is a guy that I came in. Stephanie's who over here, my whole team's over here, and if, and if you want to talk to my whole team, just raise your hand a little bit so they can tell you that I'm not lying and you can go talk to them and they do all the treatments. But uh, the, this guy walked in, his wife was getting injections, and I walked in to meet his wife and uh, try to smooth her a little bit, and then the guy uh, talks and he says, well, what about me? And so one thing you know, he decides to get a hero and a moxie. This guy is like, one of, he's one of the girls now. He comes, he comes all the freaking time, and I, I mean, he's bringing Nancy gifts and the whole deal. And I and I and I and I'm 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 really sad because I told Caroline, I, you know, I want to see the latest picture of this guy because I saw a picture of the other day and all those brown spots are gone. This guy is really turning into uh, 
He's really in touch with his feminine side now. It's just awesome. So uh, this is my bald head after one treatment with the BBL Hero. My I got a kick out of this because my daughter, I posted this on Instagram, and my daughter's a dermatologist, and you see that little red thing, and she goes, Dad, I love your result, but you need to come in and see me about that skin cancer on the top of your head. So, <laughs> so, uh, so where we're going at a high level, specialty applications, just real quick as I, as I close this down in a few minutes, uh, the YAG. Uh, you got to be careful when you use the YAG, but using that YAG for blue veins around the eyes is, is dangerous but it's doable. And we're gonna talk about that tomorrow morning, but you can see the difference. These ladies uh, did her facial resurfacing, um, came back in, and cleaning up those blue veins are just uh, are really fun. Um, and I, then on Rhinophyma, I use a blade to sculpt, but it's kind of gross. So if you set that m I'm sorry, if you set that uh, Erbium, I told you with a four millimeter spot size, and turn that thing up to 10 or 20, uh, this guy came in with a rhinophyma. I had to resect his nose. Uh, car I just carved it out and, uh, with, with the knife and then, oh, I actually showed that. I didn't realize that, okay. So, and then you can take the, this is my, one of my favorite things to do. Is that going? Oh, there you go. So this is so much fun. You know, so you just, you just, you just sculpt the nose out with this laser and you can really you can really make a nose and so you end up this guy's a German he never he came back one time and he never came back for um, a German guy named Walther or something and uh, he loved it and came back and said his nose looked great but you can see the kind of improvement you can get on the table uh, and when you see the lateral here you can really make and change the guy so it's a lot of fun to use lasers in combination with surgery this is a guy that had a little rhinophyma out of his lateral nose that you could you could really clean up well uh, you can see I cleaned up his lateral ala there and then, uh, and I, I just used, I just think that the last thing I'm gonna tell you is this is for the surgeons in the room. If you do surgery, we age in four ways. Gravity, dynamic wrinkles, uh, skin quality, and volume. And if you don't address all of them, it looks out of place. So you could do, you could do um, a great facelift, and if the lady's 70, and you've made her look 50, but her skin still looks 70, People say, that's a bad facelift. No, it's not. It's that you didn't correct the skin to make it match the contour. So when you do that, it's kind of like the most fun I can do. And so these are some of the things that you can do when you match the skin and the face, and it all works together, and it, 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 it just looks, to me, uh, a really nice improvement. So you can combine your side time with all of your lasers. So come visit us in Dallas at our new office. We're proud of it do our preceptorships, and uh, so a whole lot of love for lasers. Um, I, I decided to go with that, and we had our new MGL de develop, uh, delivered a couple of weeks, and I love it, and I know it's a little early, um, uh, and I may have gotten out ahead of myself, but I've taken it to the next level, so um, anyway. Uh, so I'm glad to be, I'm, I'm glad to be here. So uh, thank, you very, thank you very much, and uh, I enjoyed speaking with you. Take care.